you have downloaded the design files and printed out your pedals and assembled them and you want to know what to do next, we'll cover it in this video. If you've not been following along, I designed these 3D printable pedals with some just regular hardware you can get from a hardware store and they're about sort of maybe $15-$20 dollars each to make, so if you're on budget they're, they're ideal. So we've got a brake, accelerator, handbrake and a clutch. If you wanted to, I've just got this sort of jig set up here because I'm playing around with wiring and all sorts of things. Obviously you wouldn't have the handbrake right next to the accelerator and, and the brake pedal but we're just playing around. So uh, I've assembled them all here and I've got the program or the software loaded on these pedals. I'm just going to go through sort of the calibration steps and any gotchas in case you're having some troubles getting these pedals up and running. So with pedals you make yourself usually you've got a, a potentiometer to I measured the distance the pedal travels, but in these ones we use a Hall Effect sensor just because it's a bit tidier and a bit easier to set up. And we've just got to um, calibrate them to our computer because it's because the Hall Effect isn't quite as much voltage range as you would get from a potentiometer setup. But we've configured the firmware or the Arduino sketch so it'll sort of account for all that um, sort of garb. But before we get started, we're going to make sure that we've got our pedals magnets and things in the right place to start with. So into the pedals we've got a magnet which goes up against the Hall Effect sensor because it detects the strength of the magnet to decide where the pedal is. And on the front where it goes in we've got two screws. One screw is to tighten it onto the shaft here so it doesn't spin around when you're pushing a your pedal and the other one is to adjust the sort of position of the magnet to how close or how far away it is from the sensor itself. Normally if it's flush then it should be fine. And when it's all sort of in position you think it's good, you should move your pedal back and forward and you'll see there's a light on the sensor itself which goes dimmer and brighter depending on how much pedal position you've got. And we want that to go up and down. If it doesn't change at all, your magnet's probably around the wrong way. So just pop your magnet out and put it back in and then give it another go and it should move. If it doesn't, the sensor could be faulty or there's a wiring problem somewhere but it should just the brightness should go up and down as you move the pedal back and forward. One problem you might get is if you push it all the way down and all of a sudden the light will flash back up again and it's because the magnet has got the edge and it's just flipped poles on your sensor so that's when you need to start tweaking this position of the magnet itself with regards to the sensor so you just loosen off those screws, twist around, just move it back and forward so when it's a full travel it should be all the way off and not Brighten, brighten back up again. Now the adjustment we've got is this foot stopper so if we find the pedal is travelling too far before it engages we can push this pedal stopper a bit closer to the pedal itself and then when you push it it'll engage a lot quicker. So we want it to light the change just as soon as the pedal gets pushed we'll move that back and forward so it gets the right position. As far as wiring goes it's all sort of in the guide uh, that you can download and we've got a power and a sensor wire coming out of each pedal to go back to the controller so you've got a couple of choices of control, you've got a Pro Micro which is this little one or the Arduino Leonardo which is this bigger one. I've gone for the smaller one, it's in this little case here. It actually is embedded within the pedal itself so I don't have any extra wires going around uh, to um, run into the pedal. It's all sort of built in there. And because I'm sort of testing I've just got this simple spring loaded connector block here so I can pull wires in and out as I go. You might want to make it a bit tidier by putting the wires directly into the board itself and then just cable tie them around like we've done here just to keep things a bit tidier while I'm testing. If you're only going to run one pedal that's going to be pretty straightforward. You just plug the USB on the side here like this then run the wire straight into your maybe you're running just a, a handbrake straight to the handbrake sensor and you're good to go but if you've got other pedals you want to join onto that into the control board itself into one of the analog inputs. The Pro Micro has got about 10 of them but you're only going to need one per um, peripheral or per pedal so when you're using three in this instance, if you had a clutch you'd be using four and so on. So in the code we just sort of tell it which uh, analog input we're going to use and then we'll just leave the other ones uh, not assigned to anything because they'll cause us problems. The only other input we've got to organise is this switch which is for calibration uh, because the sensitivity is quite different to what your computer is sort of expecting. We need to calibrate the pedals um, in situ so we push the button and we just move the pedals back and forward and it stores it in the EEPROM of the controller so when you take this set of pedals to any computer it'll just go straight away. So once you've got all your pedals lined up and the sensor goes back when it goes back the light comes on and off as you'd hope it's time to hook it up to um, the computer and update the firmware on the controller. 
so the sketch, well the Arduino sketch which comes with the download with STLs and everything else and the guide is um, made for the Leonardo and the Pro Micro but the only thing you want to change on here is sort of in the top sort of few lines of the code and that is you just put a double slash in front of which board you're not using otherwise it'll be programming for the wrong one and down here we choose which um, analog input we're going to use so there's 10 so you can choose between 10 or make it easy for one that's going from A1, A2 and A3 it's, there's no sort of handbrake within the firmware it's a rudder so we're just going to use we're going to say rudder but we're actually going to mean handbrake brake pin accelerator pin A1, A2 and A3 what's going to happen is the wire going from the brake is going to go back the sensor wire is going to go back to the Pro Micro and get connected to A2 or the pin marked A2 the accelerator is obviously going to go back to A3 and the handbrake in this case is going to go to A1 once we've got all that sort of those lines sorted out we don't have to do any more in the code we can just download it so we just shoot it to the top and press upload it'll go do its upload thing and then we can start using it we can pretty much not use the computer anymore for anything because anything else we want to do now we can just do with the pedals themselves but it's good for troubleshooting to be able to see what's actually happening so if we go into the console and go to serial monitor we can see this is spewing out data from the pedals what it's reading these pedals are already been calibrated so these numbers are about where it on your one you might see wildly different numbers which means it needs to be calibrated and you can calibrate it at any time so and part of the wiring configuration we've just got a little switch here and when I push the switch the controller will start flashing and that just tells us that the device is ready to calibrate the pedals so to calibrate the pedals it's as simple as pushing it all the way back and it'll go on each one do it a couple times if you want doesn't really matter once it's done push the button again and they calibrate it that's all there is to it so you don't actually need an electrical hook hooked up to it unless you're playing the game of course but the calibration or anything like that we don't need to worry about it if we go into the serial monitor again we can see the values that's coming out with and if we push it back and forward we should see them going up to the highest value they can on each one and once that's done it's just the case of going into your game and attaching the device you've got to the function you want whether it be brake, handbrake or accelerator because that varies across different games if you watch my last video about uh, programming this up or setting up your Arduino environment it'll go through showing you how to program PNG but every single game is a little bit different so you might want to tweak your particular game slightly differently but the crux of it is now it's programmed those calibration settings are stored inside the memory non-volatile memory so they'll never go missing until you calibrate it again of course and then you just um, plug it in and start playing again these pedals are super cheap to make you know, just if you've got a 3d printer it'd be just a couple of bucks really to get them up and running uh, if you've got the build guide already it's over here and if you want to watch more videos about making some racing stuff subscribe thanks for watching